Hello, everyone. My name is Michele Angelo Rocha, and I'm a PhD student in Educational Leadership and Policy Studies at the University of South Florida. Today, I'm here with a very special guest, and her name is Dr. Maria Elena Batezaghi. Dr. Batezaghi is the author of the chapter Theories and Practices of Transcription from Discourse Analysis, part of the book Analyzing and Interpreting Qualitative Research after the interview that is in production right now with SAGE. Dr. Batezaghi is Associate Professor of Communication at the University of South Florida. She studies how social discourses of authority can be traced in spoken and written discourses. Her research on therapy, psych psychiatry, crisis settings, academia, and qualitative research as practice has been published in journals such as Discourses Studies Management, Communication Quarterly, Communication Studies, the Review of Communication, Communication and Medicine and Language under Discussion. She is also the editor of Qualitative Research in Medicine and Healthcare. Thank you so much, Dr. Batezaga, to come here and talk to us today. So could you share a little bit about your chapter? Yes, my pleasure. And thank you for having me. So um, my chapter in, in the book is about transcription and specifically, as you said, transcription, the practice of transcription in discourse analysis. In discourse analysis, we take discourse analysts <laughs> uh, take transcription very seriously because um, it is important um, what you transcribe and how you how you transcribe it by what you transcribe i mean uh how you transcribe it uh when i see a transcript uh that is um without any notation okay uh without any notation and sometimes even cleaned by which i mean not faithful to how people actually speak, I do not consider this a real, okay, transcript. And this sounds very harsh, but if um, it does not, it is not representative of how we really communicate. And it is missing out. It is missing out on our disfluencies our pauses like ah, 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 <laughs> our false starts, like the words we begin but do not finish and we start new sentences all the time. Our pauses, our emphases, like our, um, our volume uh, and, you know, if we speak more quietly or more loudly, uh, if we see, speak faster or slower, all of these things are significant, are, are significant to interpretation. So in discourse analysis, transcription is highly theorized. We understand that how we transcribe, it is not the truth. There are many ways of transcribing and many choices in how we do it, but it is a way to render a transcript more or less valid um, and a way to speak to each other about the data we collect. And you should never clean a transcript. That I think, and I don't know if it makes sense, is not respectful <laughs> to how people speak. Um, how do you think this chapter will contribute to qualitative analysis? I think every author in the book is contributing and passionate about qualitative analysis. So the, pra the practice of transcription, which is in fact a practice because it will take many times, you know, and it would take, it will take a collaborative effort between analysts who listen together in what are called data sessions. Um, contributes uh, to, to analysis, right? To, to qualitative analysis um, by producing an analysis 
That is that is more valid. Uh, that is valid, <laughs> not more valid, <laughs> but but can rest on 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 evidence that everybody else can see for themselves. Um, is is reliant on on a, on a text. Okay. Um, so you can you can refer to lines. Okay, in this text, which everybody uh, does, and you uh, can refer to every single thing that um, is dependent on notation. Now, every single thing has like pauses, has been theorized historically a lot. <laughs> so for everything that you notice, you can you can examine it and uh, contextualize it theoretically in how people are speaking. So I think uh, that is a contribution. I think it's so, so important what you are saying because when you are transcribing an interview, I think just how through the breathing or how the person say a word, they can, uh, they already, is this is data, you can especially- I think so. So I think that's so, and sometimes people don't use this sometimes as data, and this is data too, because this is express emotions. Absolutely. So I think, I mean, depending on how far you want to go with notation, sometimes you don't need it. And, you know, it, it again, it depends what your aims are, but I absolutely agree with you and it also shows the relationship between the interviewee and the respondent right yeah yeah there is like something unique like that you want to tell to the, your future readers that's gonna read this chapter well i hope to encourage them to pay more attention uh, to transcription and to perhaps um want to transcribe more um more fully and with more detail and i think um the experience i've had is when people actually start transcribing with more detail they realize how the complexity of our speech yeah yeah and uh just uh, look what i just did i went and uh just <laughs> <laughs> but these things have, and now I say, but these things have significant. Yeah, they are meaningful. They have significance. I'm sorry. Uh, so, you know, every time we start a sentence and then we redirect, that has significance. Yeah. Um, and, and to say, ah, 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 it also has significance because it happens to be a way for me to keep the floor, to keep you from talking. Yes. So for, for me to keep talking, even though I'm just saying, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. <laughs>